timely, vital, compelling. Welcome to Divine Connections, an invitation to make God relevant in your life. Now, here's your host, Frida Bowers. Welcome to Divine Connections. We are glad you've joined us for today's program. Our special guest is anointed to gather the harvest, heal the hurting, and build up the body of Christ. Since 2003, he has been the senior pastor of Bavard Worship Center in Malabar, Florida, where he consistently teaches the revelation of freedom through Christ. Please join us in welcoming Pastor Tim Finlayson to Divine Connections. Thank you for that Thank great introduction. You. Thank you guys for allowing me to be here today. It's, it's just exciting to be here. It is wonderful having you. We've heard so many good things about your church. As a matter of fact, uh, why don't you go ahead, welcome Miss Linda. I'll Thank get back you. to Miss Linda in just a moment. Thank why you. don't you go ahead and just share with us about your church. All right. We are located at 6825 Babcock Street in Malabar, Florida. Our Sunday morning service is at 10 o'clock and our Wednesday night Bible study is at 7. And we'd like to invite you to come out and be a part of those services. We are... Um, we just preach the Word of God, allow the Holy Spirit to move and minister, and we're in the middle of revival, and we'd like for you guys to come out and join us and, and uh, help us to build up the kingdom of God in East Central Florida. Amen. Amen. You know, it's always wonderful to have a great church to go to. Yes. And then those to visit in the Central Florida area. You know, we like sharing these with you, because so often I'll have people ask about different churches in the area. And we just want you to be aware of the things that God has for you. We know it has much for us, but did you know he has much for you? <laughs> because it's for the whole body of Christ. Right. Amen and amen. Amen. Welcome, Miss Linda. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming. And, and I like your outfit. Thank you. Black and white and white and black. It's yeah. beautiful, though. It yeah. is really nice. And thank amen. you. Thank you for coming, Pastor Tim. Yes. You know, I have been to your church. Yes, you have. I have been to your church, and I am a, an eyewitness, Frida, yes. that this is a wonderful, thriving body of Christ. It is a wonderful, thriving body of Christ. You have a wonderful congregation. Not only are they very loving, but they are also just very attentive to the Word. That's one thing I watch when I travel and minister ch at okay. churches. I see if the people are paying attention. Yes. <laughs> I do. You know yes. That that's is important. That, it is one of my, yeah. That's the you reason know, you go, really. It, it is. Be. It is. <laughs> and, and your people are very, very, oh. very open to the Word of the Lord. And they listen and they pay attention. And that was really very impressive to me. Oh, what a impressive. high compliment. I appreciate that very much. I love my church. Yes. You got some great people there and, yes. and God has enabled us to just build some great things for the kingdom of God and we're excited about it. And you're in a building project. We are in a building project. Right. Signed some major papers yesterday. You wrote did. some major checks yesterday. Yeah, that's part and, of the deal. Uh, yeah. So it is happening and just in a few months we'll be in our brand new building wow. and finally have a building that matches our message. How wonderful. And we're excited about that. Yeah, you are a little hard to find because you're sort of tucked away yes, back in the back and you're going to, on the same piece of property, you're just moving to the street. Is exactly. That sort of, we'll be right in wonderful. the same place, but you'll be able to see us from the road and right. things like that. Right now, you got to look for a sign. Yes. And the <laughs> Bible says a wicked and perverse generation looks for a sign, but you still have to look for a sign to find us. <laughs> and we're back there, and uh, and when you step into the building, the Holy Spirit just uh, is doing some amazing things in people's lives, and thank you for giving people the opportunity and, and to know that they're, we're here. You're we're there. That. You're definitely there and doing a thriving work. I appreciate that so yes. much. You're very kind. Amen. Yes. Amen. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, that's yes. who we're going to talk about today. Oh, yes. And you know, it's amazing. When you start talking about him, he just shows up. Matter yes, of fact, he, he's already here. Yes, yeah. he is. <laughs> because we have already been talking about him on this set, getting ready, just anticipating greatness. If you'd like to turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, and read with us. And also, I want to encourage you, if you want to get a pen and pad, paper, I should say, just uh, get one right now. We'll give you a couple of seconds so you can make notes. You know, this, in addition to being a program, it, there's also quite a bit of teaching that's done during the times that we are on this set. And you know, when I sit down to listen, because I have some of my favorites on television, Pastor, I like to always take a pad and a pen. Me too. And make notes. 
you know, to review and to, and to read over and to really engage in what God is saying to me. Amen. Right. And that's what we want to encourage you to do also, okay? I want to read this verse out of the King James, and then I'm going to throw it to the pastor here and get you to read it, maybe out of a different, another yes, uh, translation. We can do this that. is found in the King James. It says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard heard of me. Verse 5, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And the uh, ESV version, English Standard Version, it says, And while staying with them, he ordered them. The King James says he commanded them, and the ESV says he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And he was, it wasn't a suggestion. It was a command. It was. Stay there yes. until you be endued with that power. Stay there and wait for it. In John chapter 20, he breathed on them before he went to the cross and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so at that moment, something took place on the inside of them, but there was still a time after he died, after he rose again from the dead, after he ascended to the right hand of the Father, mm -hmm. he said, wait, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm sending the Comforter, and the right. Comforter has come. Right. And in Acts chapter 2, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and the Bible says that cloven tongues of fire sat upon each of them. That was the promise of the Father. There was a mighty rushing wind. It filled the house where they were sitting, right. and they right. came out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, it went in there, scared people, not understanding their future, and came out of there bold in the Lord. Right. Peter was emboldened, mm -hmm. the same one that denied the Lord three times, mm -hmm. was received that empowerment from the Holy Spirit that came and lived on the inside of him and saturated him, turned him into a brand new man, right. preached the Word of God, and 3,000 people got born again That's in right. one day. <laughs> we wow. need this Holy Spirit in these last days. We, we, we've right. got to have him. That's so right. there is a when you become born again, the Holy Spirit does move in, and your spirit and God's spirit becomes one with God, right. and you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Right. But there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I believe it's where you submit yourself to the Holy Spirit, and He begins to take over in your life. And if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's a free gift. It belongs to you. And so you're born again, and subsequent to your born again experience, you can submit yourself to God and say, God, I need this power. I need a power to witness. I need a power to uh, go to the next level where I just immerse myself in your grace and that Holy Spirit will come on you. He'll overtake you as you give him control of your life. And one of the evidences of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the ability to pray in a language where you're praying the perfect will of God. In Romans 8, 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. Now that word infirmities is not sickness and disease. He's talking about an inability to produce. All of us have things in our life that we don't know how to produce. Right. Yes. We're born again. We, we love God. But there's just some things that we, we don't, we, we've hit a wall. Right. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps our inability to produce. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Mm -hmm. He didn't say we didn't know how to pray. Right. Jesus taught us how to pray. Pray to the Father in right. the name of Jesus. Right. But sometimes you don't know what to pray. Right. When you're standing there in the hospital room mm -hmm. and they've given you, you know, do we uh, continue on with this treatment or do we turn it over to God? Uh, I, I, I don't know where my children are right now. I don't even know how to pray for them. The Holy Spirit yes. shows us how to do that. Let me finish reading this. Yes. For we, for we do not wish know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And verse 28 is one of the most quoted scriptures, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's quoted kind of out of the setting. Mm -hmm. It says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. And I've kind of heard it like this. Well, you never, never know what God's going to do. You never <laughs> oh, know what's going to happen. No. <laughs> and, but we know this. All things are going to work together for the good of them of the Lord. The devil's banging your brains out on the sidewalk of life, but somehow or another God's going to get glory for this. That's not what the scripture is saying. Not at all. No. He's no. saying that when we pray in the Holy Spirit, yes. we're praying the perfect will of God. That's right. When you allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you in that supernatural language, pastors need it. 
members need it, yeah. teachers need it, right. uh, business owners need it. Because sometimes, especially in this day and age, we don't know what to pray for. And you surrender yourself to God and He will allow... Out of your belly, as Jesus said, will flow rivers of living water. And it'll come springing forth out of you. And you'll begin to pray in that language. Mm -hmm. And you know that you're praying the perfect will of God. Right. And we know right. that all things, not all things that happen to us in life, but all things we pray about in the Holy Ghost, right. with groanings that cannot be uttered, they are working together yes. for our good. That's because right. we're the called according to His purpose. According to That's his why God. He said, go and tarry. Because he knew there would be some things in life we're going to face right. that we have to hook up with the Holy Spirit. And he had to pray through us mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Jude chapter 20 that when you pray in the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you're building yourself up in your most holy faith. Right. I love that. Right. Now see, faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing by the Word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when you read the Logos, the written Word of God, faith comes. I believe holy faith, if you'll give me permission to kind of go there a little bit, mm -hmm. if holy faith is when all of a sudden you're reading your Bible and it changes font on you. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. It's like, whoa! Yeah. And all of a sudden it's not just the Word I'm reading, that becomes my Word for my situation. But I believe holy faith, the most holy faith, is that when you're praying something and you begin to worship God in a holy language and He begins to bubble up out of your, your spirit, man, right. and all of a sudden you don't even know what you said, right. but you trust Him. Right. That what right. I just prayed, right. even though I don't know what I prayed, I don't have to know. Right. If I knew, I'd probably try to mess it up and by helping him out. But right. I just trust him that what I just prayed is working together for mm -hmm. my good. You build yourself up that way. We need this Holy Spirit today. You guys pray that way a lot, don't you? Yes, we do. We like to do that. And you know the reason is because we run out of English words ourselves. That's it. Have you ever heard that? Yes, <laughs> yes we do. We Especially do. when you pray. Yes. You right. know, I realized that many years ago. Yes. If I kept on trying to... Think about what to pray about someone. Yes. After two or three minutes, I'd run out of what yes. the circumstances are. And we're not to pray that anyway. Right. Right. We're not. We're not supposed to pray the problem. We're no, supposed to pray the answer. That's exactly. Right. And so we hook up with the one that has the answer. He prays through us. Through us. He bypasses our brain that's, that's bombarded right. with doubt and fear and unbelief and goes right to our spirit where that most holy faith is. Mm -hmm. And we love him enough just to trust him. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that we have not because we ask not. Right. Yes. In Ephesians 3.20, he says, Now God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all yes. that we ask or think. Right. Now, well, if we have not because we ask not, what good does it do to have a God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think? Yeah, because if I it? can't ask that, I can't <laughs> have it. He has found a way to bypass us. Yes. And to get us to ask for things that's beyond what I can ask. It's beyond what I can think. And that's why when things begin to show up, because He is a good God. Mm -hmm. He's a merciful God. Mm -hmm. And things begin to show up in your life that, where did this come from? It's probably when you spent some time or somebody spent time praying for you, mm -hmm. the perfect will of God in the Holy Spirit, and then another language that only comes from God. Give Him something to work with today and let Him pray through you today. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, it works. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know what? We did not have this schedule, but I am going to ask you, if you don't mind, Pastor. Okay. Lead the people, those who are, are, are searching for this gift. Yes. Can you do that? I would love to do that. Thank yes. you for that honor. Yes. Oh. Just lead our audience. Just Amen. look in this camera here. I will do that. Mm -hmm. And because I'm sure there's someone saying, my goodness, tell me how. Show me what I need to Amen. do. What is my part? Amen. Because mm -hmm. they're hungry to, and yes. they want to, to be able to flow in the right. gift that you're talking I about. Because yes. people are hungry. All of us recognize when you watch the news that we need an awakening. We need yes. God to right. do something in our nation yes. and we don't know how to pray I don't know how to pray for my nation you know I pray for a Republican or a Democrat or Independent only God knows that's right but God has given the but body of Christ know. the yes. ability for us to get together and begin to pray and all of a sudden now the way I voted last election doesn't matter now the Holy Spirit's praying through the body of Christ because the Bible says he's coming back when we all come to the in the unity of the faith I believe one of the way, one of the few times that we're actually together in the unity of the faith is when all of a sudden we should turn everything else off and allow the Holy Spirit to begin to pray for us. The Bible says that they spake with tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. And they, when I was seeking this baptism, this empowerment, they kept telling me to yield to God and yield to God. 
here's what I learned to do. I just trust you, Lord. I trust you with my salvation. I trust you with my healing. And I trust you because you said if I ask, I would receive. If I seek, I would find. If I knock, it would be open unto me. And Jesus said, because which of you who are evil parents know how, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask? Mm -hmm. And so what you have to do, we're going to ask Him. Heavenly Father, right now, in the yes. name of Jesus, I yes. ask you, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. I'm a born-again Christian. My spirit and God's spirit have been made one with God. Now, Father, I ask you now, fill me with your spirit and give me the supernatural ability to pray the perfect will of God. And, Father, I will use this gift every day for the rest of my life or until you come back again. I'm going to need, I'm going to use this gift that you've given me right now. That's it. Just ask him right now. Just close your yes. eyes. Yes. And just kind of lift your hands up toward heaven in the, in the way to receive. And just ask him, Father, yes. fill me now yes. with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now let me pray for you. Father, you said, Father, that Paul would lay hands on them and they received. I can't lay hands on them, but I say now, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Did you pray that? Here's what I want you to do. Just begin to thank Him. Just close yes. your eyes, begin to thank the Lord. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for baptizing me in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, are you ready? Here it goes. Now, when I count to three, I don't want you to pray in English. I want you to pray whatever syllables, whatever words come up out of you. And your brain will go, oh, that's just you. That's just you. Of course it's going to be you. The Holy Spirit's not going to take your tongue. He's going to give you some words. And just like sometimes when you're believing for healing, you've got to confess you're healed before you feel healed. Some, when you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you just by faith begin to speak whatever syllables come. Because it's not coming from up here. It's coming out of your spirit, man. Out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water. And what, I, and what I want you to do is, after you get those few words in just a few moments, just keep saying them, keep rolling them over in your spirit. After we go off the air, just maybe just turn the sound down a little bit and just worship Him. Because the more you pray this way, the more you learn how to yield to this. And it'll just begin to flow out of you more freely and more freely. Are you ready? One, two, three. That's it. Just begin to worship Him right now. And can we just pray in the Holy Spirit yes. together right yes. now? El rombo ste ben kroboste, rende la kotombo, rebeste la bombron, brengi la nambom brimbea. That's it. That's it. You say, is that all there is to it? That's all there is to it. And the more you yield to that. Now, that was a very short, you know, we, that was a very short time. I want you to continue to flow in you because you just prayed the perfect will of God. Yeah. Pastor Tim, do you know what you just said? Have no idea. They don't know what I said. But I wasn't talking to Frida and Linda. No. I was talking to God. The Bible says, He <laughs> that prays right. in an unknown tongue is not talking to men. He's talking to God. That's right. So we're not talking to each other. We're not talking to the devil. We're talking to God. And the Holy Spirit's allowing us to pray through Him in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Thank you for letting me Amen. do that. That Amen. was powerful. Yes, Lord of God. yes. You know what's so precious? When God created the earth and everything, he was, it was with words. He yes. spoke it out. Yes. And now he has given us a voice to yield to the Spirit yes. with words. Yes. In another language. Yes. Think about that. He didn't give those to the animals or to anyone, but to humans. Right. And he's calling us to yield to him. Yes. But you do have to yield. And you have to believe. Yes, you do. To receive. It's already there for you, waiting for you. Right. What do you have to say, Miss Linda? I know you have a lot to say, <laughs> too. <laughs> Well, I, li I like that you pointed out yes. that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a subsequent experience yes, to is. salvation. Yes, it yes. is a subsequent experience. That's right. And some people receive it at the same time as salvation. I did. Yes. I received it at the same time. Mm -hmm. But most people do not. Right. Most right. people do not. I, it was years before I realized that wasn't the norm. Right. I sort of thought everybody got it the same way I did. But because it is a subsequent experience, because it is something that comes after the salvation experience, it is a releasing of something you've already received. You've already received. The, Jesus breathed on the disciples yes. 
before they were filled with yes. the Holy Spirit. That when he breathed upon them in John chapter 20, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. We receive the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. at salvation. As I said, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit at the same time I received salvation. Unusual as that was. For you to tell us a little bit about your experience, because your experience was precious. <laughs> Sometimes Linda kind of laughs with me about it, but yes, I went up to the altar to receive. Angela was a baby. Yeah, yep. she was a baby. And the and altar's up front of the church. Yes, what's okay. interesting, I had not planned to go that night. I mean, I guess this is what you're talking about, yes. all of this. Yes. We were at First Assembly in Winter Garden, and this friend came over to me. She says, let me hold Angela while you, while you go up and receive. Now, at that time, Brother Tim, I want to tell you, every night... Every Sunday night, people were receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This was in the latter part of the 60s. That's yes. how long ago it's been. But every Sunday night, matter of fact, we would stand on the front porch of our church. And we would say, I wonder. And I've often thought about that word wonder. The Bible says signs and wonders. But I wonder who's going to receive tonight. It, we had such great expectation. Yes. Right. I wonder. Well, when this friend, this person, one of, the, one of the members came by and said, let me hold Angela well, I gave Angela to her, and I thought I hadn't planned this, but did you know I made a heart change right then? I got up from that seat, and on my way to the altar, I told myself, in my heart, I will not leave that altar until I have received. Yes. It is 3 o'clock in the morning. I had already set myself aside. Yeah. I have someone that I can trust with my, with my child, and Claude was there somewhere in the audience. <laughs> you know, we were always at church on Sunday night. Yes, ma'am. And when I went up, though, I did not know. I didn't even really know how to even ask. I'll yes. be honest with you. So as I sat there, <laughs> very interesting. I just started just trying to hear the Lord, wanting to hear the Lord. And the first thing I heard, it's very interesting, was repent. <laughs> so I asked the Lord, okay, show me what to repent of. Well, you know what he told me? I did not realize that I was in rebellion to my husband. He did not want me to mark my eyebrows. <laughs> Well, it's not that funny. It's very funny. <laughs> and what I saw, I saw a Maybelline pencil this big. <laughs> and they're only this big. A little red Maybelline pencil. <laughs> I was 20 years old. But did you know, I made a hard commitment that I would never mark my eyebrows again. <laughs> and, and then I kept on waiting for the next instruction and not realizing, looking back, for, for the Holy Ghost to talk to me. And then what came to me was, glorify me. And I thought, okay, yes. okay. I had taught Sunday school since I was 14, the, the primary boys and girls. So I started talking about his own. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Still precious. <laughs> yeah, the experience is still precious. The Holy Spirit is so yes. in this room right now. I mean, just join us. Just worshiping right now. I just started glorifying God, telling Him what the love of us on the Bahasia, the lily, the valley, to the Bahasia, the Friday morning stars, just things I had taught in Sunday school. Because she the Bahasia, and then all of a sudden it came up with my Bahasia, the Bahasia, just like this. And for two hours, I was on the floor. I do I see ya. I can mm. see ya. It was so light. Yes. It was so it's still real. Light. Look <laughs> at the light that is still there at this <laughs> moment. What about her son of a husband? Son of a husband. Precious. And, and not realizing, you know, he said, the Bible says, that he only came to glorify Jesus. Yes. And don't know sort of my nice instruction he gave me, which I did not even realize it was the word. Yes. You know, being so young, a young mother, young wife. And the boss would like to see him. So glorifying him released that yes, baptism. Yeah, the boss would like to see him. Precious, precious, <laughs> precious. What she's experiencing right <laughs> now is the presence of the Holy Spirit just filling every part of her being. It's good. The Bible calls it new wine. Right. It's 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 amazing. It's it's joy unspeakable. That's why we're going. It's it's it's, it's, it's because it's, words can't describe it. Just just receive everything he has for you in Jesus' name. I like it that she hooked together repentance. With it. Right, right. Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Right, and the Holy Spirit came on him in the form of a dove. When the church received the baptizing baptism of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit came on them in the form of cloven tongues of fire. Right. What's the difference? There was nothing in Jesus to burn out. 
No. We ah. are not at Dove stage yet. <laughs> There's, he's still burning oh, in us. He's God. still working yeah. in us. And Holy Spirit loves, and God loves us just like we yes. are. Right. But He loves us enough not to keep us like we are. That's right. And so the fire of God, oh, as you begin to surrender yourself and begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, God. It's so real in this room right now. It begins to burn Hallelujah. out. It begins to show years of your life that you don't even Hallelujah. like about yourself anyway. The things, and, and begins to give you the ability to go to the next place yeah. in God because you're hungry for God. You're thirsty for God. Right. And all I can say for you is receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. I'm going to go back to the scripture that Linda yes. uh, shared with us. That, or, uh, Miss uh, Frida did. Jesus commanded them. Yes. Jesus ordered them. Yes. What, what, yes. Are you going, what are you going to do with that? Yes. It's not like, well, that's, our church doesn't do that. That's just like a Frida Bowers Pentecostal thing. Jesus commanded them to go and be filled and endued with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Right. Say yes. yes to him right now. Yes. Because it began... A, a journey yes, yes, and it began yes, something in you yeah how would you have raised angela without that i don't know how would you what would we have done all the times that you face oh. and when you don't know what to pray about the television station oh, what's yes. happening i don't know but the old timers called it praying through, through. <laughs> yeah praying through to what Praying through until a knowing comes. Yeah. Everything yes. is going to be all yes. right. But I knew before I, before I went home that he was going home with me with the evidence of tongues. I just knew that. Yes. Uh, you know, and I, I appreciate Janie Thurman. They live in uh, Tallahassee now. They were teachers. I thought, God, you were the one that had her to come and offer to take Angela. Yes. I don't know why for some reason I never did go up to the altar. Everybody else was receiving, and we always were expecting someone. Right. But you know what? That was my night. Sure. And you know why it was my night? I chose it to be my night. Right. <laughs> and yeah. today can be your time. Right. It is your time. Yes. Right. And I want to tell you, he is the teacher of the church. Yes. And he will pray through you. There's only really two people that pray. Let me just tell you that. Lynn Hammond taught us that. Who is Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. Yes. The only thing is the Holy Ghost needs a body. Jesus had his body. When he came, he came into the form of a baby born by Mary. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The Holy Ghost needs that temple. The temple of God. The temple. He is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he needs you to pray through you. He will not just come out and bark on the wood and do something right. else. Right. He right. needs us. Yes. And we have a mission. Let me tell you that. You have a mission. And I want to also say something. If you get upset at this, do not write me because I will not answer it. If for some reason you're under a pastor that's not spirit-filled, Pray, ask God what to do concerning him being spirit-filled. If he's opposed to that, I encourage you to move. You may say, Frida, how can you say that? I want to say that the gift of the Spirit of the living God is for you. And you're stunting your growth. Did you know that? Are you going to keep growing in God? You have to be under that headship. Because as the head goes, so goes the body. <laughs> and our headship, I will never forget, Sister Bruce, brother and sister Bruce. She was a woman of God, lived to 97. They came from uh, on the other side of Tampa to pastor our church. And she preached that night. She preached on Sunday nights. He preached on Sunday mornings. Powerful woman of God. And she was, she was one who had really just uh, watered all of that. Yes. Just powerful. Well, I want to say thank you. I did not realize our time was already up. Thank you, Pastor, oh, for coming. This was awesome. Thank you, thank Pastor, you for, for coming. And Holy yeah. Spirit, we're so yes. grateful. Thank that. you, Holy Spirit, for coming. Oh, you're, you're what we want to talk about. <laughs> yes. It's all about the Holy Ghost. It's all yes. about Jesus. Yes. Linda, thank you. Thank the Lord. We love you. Thank, thank you, you, Jesus. And I want to say thank you. I do want you to write me and let me know that you received yes. His gift for you. Right. Okay? Thank you. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Amen. You've been watching Divine Connections with your host, Frida Bowers. To get more information about the program or its airtime schedule, go to superchannel.com. Write to Frida with your personal note or to enclose a financial gift to the Super Channel. Write to Post Office Box 608040, Orlando, Florida, 32860.
Join us next time for Divine Connections with Frida Bowers.